All right, so we're going to talk about um, speed and velocity, what they have in common, what they don't, and then we're going to look at mathematically representing this. So we're going to do a little bit of calculation. Okay, so here's a comparison of speed and velocity. Um, you see they both have a magnitude, um, and this is basically, this. these describe the uh, rate of the change of the positions um, of the object, okay? So, both have a magnitude. Velocity, however, is a vector quantity, and so it also has a direction. Speed is scalar, so no direction. Their symbols are the same, and you see that the type of units that you can have for the magnitude are the same as well. But on velocity, you do have a extra, um, thing that you need for direction. So say you have a car and it's got a speedometer and it's telling you how fast you're going. So 25 meters per second. That is your speed. You do not know the direction. That's just telling you the magnitude. All right. Now, if you have a really nicer, newer car, then you will have a speedometer, which will be telling us the magnitude. And you might also have a GPS or even um, a compass like on your mirror or something that tells you what your direction is. So this actually right here is telling us your velocity. All right, now let's look at a little bit of equations. So basically we are using the formula um, V equals the change in position over the change in time. Um, you could also see it commonly written as V equal delta D over delta T. So basically just interchanging these two. Uh, you could also see it just written simply as V equal D over T. Just understand that basically what these little triangles mean, they're telling us the change. The change is the final minus the initial. So if you went from, say, um, 0 to 10 seconds, the change in time would be 10 minus 0. Okay, so basically 10. All right, here's a little summary chart that shows us um, what the equations we've been looking at so far. Um, notice that this right here applies to both this and this. So the uh, velocity equals change in distance over change in time, where change in uh, is defined as final minus initial. That goes for both velocity and speed. The only difference is that velocity is also going to tell us the direction. Okay, so if we're looking at this, uh, we got a track meet. The beginning of the event is marked by the firing of a starter pistol. Exactly 0.3 seconds, so that definitely looks like some sort of time, after seeing a puff of smoke rise from the starter's pistol. The sound of the firing of the pistol is heard by David 100 meters away. So there's just another number, and that is meters, so that's definitely distance. So the sound travels... 100 meters and 0.3 seconds. So V equal D over T. So distance is 100. Time is 0.3. So that gives us 333, don't forget your units, meters per second. So this is our speed. Now we could just straight change that into velocity by saying 333 meters per second. Now we got to give it a direction. So we'll say towards David. Or you could have said, uh, you know, to the north or some other directionality. Okay, so now it's a velocity because we've given it a um, direction. I also could have just put like a positive sign outside. There, that could also be considered um, labeling the direction. Pluses mean on a coordinate plane, you know, X is this direction are positive. So this would mean positive direction. 
All right, now the sun, um, light from the sun, reaches the earth in 8.3 minutes. So this is gonna be a time. Um, and that tells us the speed of light. So that's gonna be um, here. And then it wants to know how far uh, from is the earth from the sun. So that's a distance. So we got velocity equals distance over time. So our velocity is three times 10 to the eighth meters per second. Distance is what we look are looking for, so I'm just gonna make it X. And then our time is 8.3 minutes. Hopefully you realize that there's an issue there. This is in minutes, this is in seconds. So we need to take this 8.3 minutes and we need to convert it to seconds. Okay, so we know there are, I'll snap, did it backwards. So there are 60 seconds in one minute. Okay, so now we've got 8.3 times 60. This is gonna give us our time in seconds. So that is 498 seconds. So that's going to be down here. All right, so we've got uh, 3 times 10 to the 8th, and we need to get that x. So we're going to cross multiply this up. So we've got 3 times 10 to the 8th multiplied by 498. All right, so when I cross those up, I am getting um, 1.49 times 10 to the 11th. And we just solved for distance, so that's in meters. All right, last example. So you and your friend Connor each drive 50 kilometers. You travel at 90 kilometers per hour. Connor travels at 95 kilometers per hour. How long will Connor have to wait on you at the end of the trip? And we wanna look at this in minutes. Okay, so I see this basically as um, you need to diagram each of you different on, on different ends of the spectrum. So I got Connor and you, which would be, I guess, you or me. I'm not sure. All right, so the distance traveled is 50 kilometers. See that right there? And we're both going that, okay? So distance, 50 kilometers. All right, now you travel at 90 kilometers per hour. Connor travels at 95 kilometers. Oh, snap. Whoops. Um, kilometers per hour. Okay, so basically we need to know how long that indicates time, right? So if we look at our V equal D over T equation, for Connor we've got 95 equals T, and then you got your 50 on top. To get T by itself, first you gotta get it off the bottom, so cross multiply. So we got 95T equals 50, divide by 95, divide by 95. So now T is equal to 50 divided by 95, which means that Connor's time is 0.53 seconds. Okay, so this is Connor. All right, now we need to go back and do the exact same thing, but for you. All right, so for you, um, same equation, V equals D over T. So we've got 90 equals 50 over T. Cross that T up, 90T equals 50. Now get the T by itself. So divide by 90, divide by 90. And we get our answer, which is, temp, uh, not temperature, time is 0.56. Okay, so here are you, and there's Connor. So the question was, how long will Connor have to wait? So essentially, we just want to subtract these two. So it looks to me like Connor is going to wait 0.03 seconds on you to get there.